morning, Pastor Ed here with online daily devotions from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey for Tuesday, August the 25th, 2020. As I mentioned yesterday, there is typically an overall or overarching theme that emerges for the Bible passages assigned each week, and this one is no exception. The theme for this week is Disciples Do Not Conform to the World. And as I pointed out yesterday, not being conformist is what makes us or should make us different from other people. Why? Because our world, and particularly our society, encourages, if not demands, conformity most of the time. But God, on the other hand, endeavors to transform us instead. But before we delve into today's reading, however, we begin once again with those three key pieces of the service of responsive prayer, namely the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Luther's Morning Prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. And to your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. The passage assigned for this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter where he writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually we, individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Well, there's a lot there in that passage, of course, but I'd like us to, to focus on that first part. And in fact, the one verse uh, is the verse of the week, the one that says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what God's will for your life and for the world is. When we talk about that, though, when Paul talks about not being conformed, um, that kind of flies in the face of I guess human nature. We do seem to be almost hardwired uh, to conform. And, and sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, sometimes that's not such a good thing. We have a, a tendency very often to adjust 
uh, our opinions to match those of the group around us, particularly the group that we associate with or that we want to be with. And you see so much of that, um, particularly in this country today in politics. And now with uh, an election coming up, we really see that people are in certain camps and they, they, you know, they, they conform to whatever the whole group is, is saying. They even have a name for that, right? It's called group think. And there was actually some years ago a study in which a group of people were recruited uh, for this particular project, and this is how it worked. They, they first were tested individually. And so on their own, these individuals determined uh, the correct answer to a, a series of questions. Uh, they determined the correct answer 86% of the time. Uh, but when they were later told that their group had given a different answer to the question, which was in fact the wrong answer, by the way, almost a third of those who were tested abandoned the correct answer in order to conform with the prevailing opinion of the group. So they're asked a question 86% of the time they get it right, but when they're told that the group gave a different answer, the wrong answer, fully a third of them who had answered correctly in the first place changed their answer. And so obviously the degree to which uh, this group think impulse expresses itself depends on, on the group and, and the issues and the individuals, but it is nevertheless a very strong um, impulse uh, among us. But Paul says that we are called as Christians to not be conformists, but to be transformed by a renewing of our minds. The Greek word for transformed is uh, metamorpho where we get the word metamorphosis from. We think of, uh, you know, uh, grade school uh, science classes with the caterpillar turning into the, uh, in, into the butterfly. The, that, that process is called metamorphosis. Um, that transformation in the Bible, it's, it's also used to describe the transfiguration of, of Jesus. Uh, but to be transformed, to be changed, um, we're called to be changed. We're called to be renewed to become new people um, through God. Well, there's probably many examples that you could give of this. One of the most famous ones have to, has to do with uh, John D. Rockefeller, the senior, the man who discovered oil and created Standard Oil and um, is, is deemed, even if you, if you put it in, in today's dollars, I think still stands as the, as the wealthiest person the, the world has ever known, at least in modern times. He was the first person to, uh, to reach the status of billionaire. Um, at the age of 23, he became a millionaire. Uh, and by the age of 50, a billionaire. And every decision and attitude and relationship that he had or made during that time was tailored uh, to create his, his personal power and wealth. He gave everything you know, to his business. But three years later, after attaining the, the billionaire status at the age of 53, he became significantly ill, very ill. His entire body was racked with pain. He lost all the hair on his head. Um, in complete agony, the world's, at that point, only billionaire could buy anything that he wanted, but the only thing he could digest was milk and crackers. And his personal, highly skilled physicians predicted that he would probably die within the year. And that year passed agonizingly slow for Rockefeller, and as he approached his death and thought more and more about it, this, this devout Christian, he was a Northern Baptist, uh, as I recall, awoke one morning with the, the remembrance, vague remembrance of a dream. And he couldn't remember all the details of it, but he knew it had something to do with not being able to take anything with him into the next life. In other words, this man who dominated... Um, the business world could have control anything he wanted to suddenly realized he wasn't even control in control of his own life and so he was left with a choice to continue doing what he was doing conforming to his own and everyone else's expectations or to change to be transformed so he called his attorneys his accountants managers and announced that he wanted to do some things differently he wanted to channel his assets to hospitals research facilities, mission work. This new direction, 
this renewal of his mind, uh, if you will, eventually led to the discovery of penicillin, cures for current strains of malaria, tuberculosis, diphtheria, the list of discoveries resulting from his choice, his transformation, is enormous. But perhaps the most amazing part of his story is that the moment he began to give back a portion of all that he had earned, his body chemistry, if you will, was altered so significantly that he got better. And so from looking like he was going to die at the age of 53, he got, went on to live to be just a couple of months shy of 98. Um, Rockefeller learned gratitude, it is said, and it made him whole. But another way of putting it was that he was transformed by a renewal of his mind, that he was able to discern and then act on the will of God. As Paul put it, what was good and acceptable and perfect. So we're called to be, we're called to conform to the world. And certainly Rockefeller conformed to all the expectations that people had and that he put on himself. But at the age of 53, there was this transformation um, that completely made him into a, a new person and, 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 and then benefited um, so many lives, even, even to this day. Um, so we're, we're called to, to be transformed. That's what Paul is, is saying here. In fact, again, that's the, that's the verse for the week. The Bible verse for the week is, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Well, let's close this morning with that prayer from St. Augustine that I shared yesterday. A loving God, to turn away from you is to fall, to turn toward you is to rise, to stand before you is to abide forever. Grant us, dear God, in all our duties, your help in all our uncertainties, your guidance in all our dangers, your protection in all, in, in all our sorrows, your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.